Hello, my name is Shahyar Shahyari, and this is a lecture in a series of lectures on introductory linear algebra based on my book, Retrolinear. The subject of this lecture is the rank of a matrix, and in particular, why is row rank equal to column rank? So let me get started. Let's say A is an M by N matrix, a matrix that has M rows and N columns. Um, and uh, we look at the number of linearly independent rows of A that we can find. We find the maximum such number. So how many rows of A you can you find that are linearly independent from each other? So um, a set of linearly independent rows. And that number happens to always be equal to the maximum number of linearly independent columns of A. So with the maximum number of columns of A that you can find so that that set is linearly independent. And this number is called the rank of A and denoted by rank A. So the question is that why are these two numbers equal? Why is it that if you find the, the, as, as many linearly independent rows that you can and as many linearly independent columns that you can, you get the same, the same answer? That's what the purpose is here. So let me give you an example. Here's a matrix. This matrix has three rows and one, two, three, four, five, six columns. It's three by six. And um, it, it has two linearly independent rows. Uh, the first two rows, for, uh, for example, are linearly independent. You can't find one of those as a scalar multiple of the other, um, but it doesn't have three linearly independent columns because the first two, when you add them, you get the third one. Three plus zero is three, four plus one is five, two minus five is minus three and so forth. Um, this, the, the, the third one is dependent on the first one. So the maximum number of linearly independent rows you can find in this matrix is two. You don't have to pick the first two, you could pick any two. Uh, but 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 um, any two of them would be linearly independent, but the third one would be in, uh, linearly uh, dependent on those. Now the same matrix, by what I said, if I'm if I'm not lying, must have two linearly independent columns, but not three. You can see there are two linearly independent columns. It's not so obvious now that there aren't three linearly independent columns. You would have to do some work to find that out. But if the theorem is correct, then that's the content. It's telling us that. By just knowing what the maximum number of linearly independent rows of a matrix are, we would also know the maximum number of linearly independent columns or, or vice versa. So this matrix has rank two, um, according to what I've said. So uh, before going on, let me just give you an outline of the proof, sort of an intuitive quick uh, uh, view of how this proof would go. Um, what you need to do is actually after hearing this, maybe stop the video and try to fill in the details yourself. And then you don't have to watch the rest of the video. Uh, the rest of the video is going to unpack this and, and, and talk about it in some detail and put it in the context of things like row space, column space, and so forth, and, and talk about row rank and column rank. So A is an M by N matrix. Uh, look at its reduced row echelon form. That's another matrix of the same size. So do elementary row operations until you get the matrix in reduced row echelon form. If you don't know what that is, watch my videos on uh, reduced row echelon form of a matrix. Now, uh, just so that I don't keep having to tell you the maximum number of linearly independent rows, I'll call that the row rank. The row rank means the maximum number of linearly independent rows that you can find. And the same thing with column rank is going to be um, the maximum number of linearly independent columns you can find in any matrix. And, and what we're trying to prove is that row rank and column rank are the same. And that's the thing we're calling rank. Now, um, row rank of A is the same as the row, row rank of R. That's the subject of a previous video that if you take a matrix and do elementary row operations, um, the row rank does not change. Um, I will explain that a little bit in more detail uh, later on. But if you know that, then you also might know that the column rank of A and column rank of R are also the same. So if you start with a matrix and find its reduced retro on form, then the row, rank, the row rank doesn't change and the column rank doesn't change. The reduced retro on form will have the same row rank as um, as 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 the matrix and would and uh, the same as as column rank, but then you say that the row rank of R, that matrix in reduced row echelon form, is the number of pivots, the number of leading ones in that uh, in that guy. If you don't know that, watch my previous videos or wait till I explain this um, uh, this whole thing in a little bit more detail. And and that happens to be also the column rank of R. You should unpack that, see why that is, or wait. Um, and, it, and that then proves the theorem. Why? Well, because for R, the reduced row echelon form of A, the column rank and the row rank are the same. Why are they the same? Because they're the number of pivots, the number of leading ones. But um, the row rank of A 
and the column rank of A are also the same as the row rank and the column rank of R respectively. And so they must be the same. So that's, that's the argument. Okay, now I'm going to expand that. And then first I'm gonna talk about row and column space. So here's a matrix that has M rows, row one, row two, row three, row M, and N columns, one, two, three, four, N. Um, and I've now named the rows. So the first row is R1, the second row is R2, the last row is Rm. These R1 through Rm are not numbers, they are row vectors. So each R3, for example, is made up of, it's an N tuple. It's an element of Rn. It's a long thing, but I've just called it Rm. I could do the same thing with the columns. So I'm gonna call the columns C1 through Cn. Each one of the Cs, again, is not a number, it's a column vector. Uh, C1 is uh, something in Rm, it has M entries, the same with C2, the same with Cn. This matrix has M rows, but each of them are an N tuple. It has N columns, but each of those is an M tuple. So each, uh, each row, Ri, is an element of Rn. Each column is an element of Rm. Again, there are um, um, M rows, but they're all in Rn. They're N columns, but they're all in Rm. Don't get confused with that. Um, now the row space of A is defined to be the span of the rows. So that means the, all the possible linear combination of the rows. So that's going to be a subspace of Rn. So uh, in Rn, you take these M vectors and see what, what are all the other vectors that you can get as a linear combination of them. And we know that this, that when you do that, when you find the span of a set of vectors, you always will get a, a subspace of, of your original um, space. So in this case, Rn. And column space, likewise, is the span of the columns. Now, this will be a subspace of Rm. So we have n columns. We look at all possible linear combinations of all of them. That, that collection will be a subspace of Rm. Now, the dimension of the row space is called the row rank of A. Um, because it's a subspace, it has a dimension. Dimension means uh, the size of a basis. Basis means a, a set that's uh, linearly independent spans. All of these are subjects of previous videos. If you're not familiar with them, you might want to watch those. And row rank will be the same as the maximum number of linearly independent rows. Why is that? Well, because we already have a spanning set for the row space. And what is that? Those are the rows. And uh, to find a basis, you use the contraction theorem. You throw out anything that's linearly uh, linear combination of the ones before, and you're, you're left with a linear um, independent set. And that will be a basis that will span. And so the maximum number of linearly independent rows that you can get is uh, the dimension of the row space, the row rank. Similarly, the dimension of the column space is called the column rank. And that's also for the same reason, um, the maximum number of linearly independent columns. Okay, so this was background. Again, all of these uh, have been subject of several videos um, in the past. Uh, videos for general vector spaces, what dimension is, um, what uh, spanning means, um, what subspaces are and so forth. And then specific ones for matrices, what's a row space, what's column space, in fact, what's a null space, which is not something we're gonna use in this uh, video, but, but those are the ma matrix spaces associated with a matrix. Okay, now if A and B are M by N matrices, what, assume that they're row equivalent. That means that you can get start from one, do elementary row operations and get to the other one. That's what means to say, that's what it means to say two matrices are row equivalent, uh, two matrices of the same size that you can get from one to the other by elementary row operations. Now, um, this has been also a subject of a previous video. What happens uh, to the row space and the column space and the null space when you do elementary row operations? So, um, and I'm just gonna go tell you the result, but you should watch the previous video to see the reasoning for this. So first of all, row space of A and row space of B are gonna be the same. This is actually not that hard to see. If you start with a matrix and do elementary row operation, our elementary row operations are basically um, um, linear combinations. Um, and therefore the row space doesn't change. I mean, that needs a little bit more proof. You have to show that row space of A is a subspace of row space of B and row space of B is a sub, sub, subset of row space of A. Um, and I've done that in a previous video. But you could argue that yourself if you want to. It's not that complicated. And because the row spaces are the same, the row ranks are the same as well. Now, the situation is a little bit more complicated for column space because the column space of A is not the same as the column space of B, or it doesn't have to be. Most of the time, it's not. Um, so 
when you when you um, do elementary row operations on a matrix, you are doing things with rows. You're doing elementary row operations, and the columns actually change drastically. So the column space, the space spanned by the columns changes, but not all is lost. Um, and, and the theorem that we proved again in the previous video about the effects of uh, elementary row operations on row space, column space, and non-space, we proved that any relationship among the columns stays. Any linear, linear, if, if one column is, uh, if column seven is three times column four, then after you do elementary row operations, still, column seven will be three times column four. And, um, and, and, and therefore, if you have a given set of columns of column vectors of A that are linearly independent, um, then the corresponding one of columns of B will also be linearly independent. If column one, three, and five from A are linearly independent, after you do elementary row operations, whatever you get, even though it look very different, columns one, three, and five of that new matrix will also be linearly independent. Again, we proved this in the previous video through thinking about the null space actually. And so from this follows that the column rank, even though the, 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 um, the column um, space is not this, the same for A and B, the column rank of A and column rank of B are the same. Why? Because the column rank is the maximum number of linearly independent columns you can find Whatever columns you find in A that are linearly independent, the corresponding ones will be linearly independent in B. And so column rank of B can't be any smaller than column rank of A. Can't be any larger because if it was, then whatever um, um, columns you found in B that were linearly independent, the corresponding ones in A would be linearly independent. And so you, you, uh, you, the column rank of A would have been different. And so column, ra column rank does not change when you do elementary row operations even though column space does change. Okay, given that, um, so we are interested in what happens to reduce row echelon form of A. The previous slide was about something a little bit more general, but if you if you start with two, ma two matrices that are there, you know that they're row equivalent, but you did, we're not assuming that either one of them was in reduced echelon form or in echelon form. But reduced row echelon form is one form of um, a matrix that's row equivalent to your original matrix. So let's say you have an N by N matrix and we now know that the row rank of A is the same as the row rank of the reduced row echelon form of A. Um, why? Because these two matrices are row equivalent. You can get from A to its reduced row echelon form using elementary row, row operations. And the same with the column rank. The column rank of A is the same as column rank of reduced row echelon form of A because A and reduced row echelon form of A are row equivalent. Okay. But uh, if you look at a matrix in reduced row echelon form, or a matrix in uh, echelon form, not reduced echelon form. Those things are slightly different than each other. But if you look at each one of those things, uh, finding the column and row rank are very easy. So if R is a matrix in row echelon form or reduced row echelon form, the difference between the two is that uh, if you're in row echelon form, you don't necessarily make everything else in the in, in, above a one, a, a, a pivot zero, whereas in reduced echelon form, you do. So, um, so, so just think about reduced row echelon form. If you have a matrix in reduced echelon form, then what is its row rank? Well, its row rank is just going to be the number of non-zero rows because the non-zero rows are linearly independent from each other because each one of them has a one in its in a new spot and they can't be linearly uh, depend, in, dependent on each other. And the other rows are just rows of zeros, which you definitely do not need in terms of spanning. So the non-zero rows affair are, are actually a basis for the row space of R, and therefore, um, 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 and, and therefore their number is, is what the row rank is. And uh, the columns of R, which ones form a basis for the column space? The ones that have a leading one in them. So for example, in this example, the first column and the third column have a pivot, a leading one in them. And those are the basis for the column space of that. Again, because um, you can, those cannot, those columns cannot be linearly dependent because each one of them has a one in a spot that the, the ones before that did not have. And everything else um, the, uh, can be written in terms of uh, those, uh, uh, those uh, columns uh, with a leading one. The columns with the leading one um, will be able to generate everything else because everything else will not have um, numbers anyplace else. And those columns with leading ones 
are basically the standard basis and you can generate anything from them uh, or elements of the standard basis. Okay, so from, for given that, I can just now prove to you that row rank and column rank are the same, which was the object of this video. So um, if R is a matrix in row echelon form, then row rank is the number of leading ones. Why? Because row rank is the number of non-zero rows and every non-zero row has a leading one. So row rank of R is the number of leading ones. And the column rank of R is, the, is also the number of leading ones. Leading ones is the same as pivots. Um, and uh, why is that? Well, because the column rank, uh, the, the basis for column space is those columns that have a leading one. And how many of those are there? Well, as many as there are leading ones. This means that the row rank of R and the column rank of R are the same. So the row, I've not proved the special case of what I wanted to prove, which is that if you have a matrix in reduced row echelon form or in row echelon form, then it's row rank and the column rank are the same. But now let's prove it for in general. So let's say A is now any, any matrix, not, not in reduced row echelon form necessarily. The row rank of A equals the column rank of A, and I'm going to prove that. The proof is let R be the reduced row echelon form of A. So do elementary row operations on A. And, and put it in reduced row echelon form. I'm not actually going to do that because I don't know what the matrix A is, but, but thinking about that will allow me to, but I know I can do that if I have a specific matrix, and thinking about that will allow me to complete the proof. And then I will say that, well, the column rank of A is the same as column rank of R, again, because two row equivalent uh, matrices have the same column ranks, even though they have different column spaces. But column rank of R, because it's a matrix in reduced row echelon form, is the same as the row rank of R. Why? Because both of those numbers is the same as the number of pivots. And the row rank of R is the same as the row rank of A because actually R and A have the same row spaces, but, but in particular, they have the same row rank. Um, and therefore the column rank of A is the same as the row rank of A. And because of that, because the fact that these two things are the same, I can call, I give one name to both of them um, and call that the rank of the matrix. So the rank of a matrix is its column rank or its row rank, those happen to be the same. And what that is, is the maximum number of linearly independent rows or the maximum number of linearly independent columns. This is the end of this video. If you like to be subjected to videos like this about undergraduate mathematics, then, um, uh, then uh, subscribe and like this video. Subscribe to my channel and like this video.